name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to call on your grace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, in the 60s there was a comedy group called the Firesign Theater which was a lot like Monty Python and they had an album titled How Can You Be Two Places at Once When You're Not 
anywhere at all. And that's kind of the way I feel today. You know, where am I? I'm in Iowa right now for the Northern Plains District Conference, which was to be held in Iowa this year. I'm home because my 90-minute workshop had to be recorded there uh, since we weren't going to actually get to go to Iowa. I'm in Francisco's house because that's where we recorded the play I was supposed to write for the district conference, and we recorded six people in six different rooms uh, for the Zoom play. Uh, I'm also at home because I'm leading an insight session this morning in Iowa. But I ought to be in Milford because this is Camp Max Sunday for the Union Center Church of the Brethren, and some of you are or were or will be in Camp Mac, depending on whether you watch this before or after or on your phone during the <laughs> service there in Camp Mac. But by the way, uh, hold off on that because Gene Hollenberg is worth listening to. Definitely. And to make things more confusing, it's not even just a question of where am I? It's when am I? Because I hate to tell you, but this is not Sunday. It's Wednesday. Anyway, so there's two questions we're asking. Where am I? When am I? How can you be two places at once when you're not anywhere at all? And today's scripture, the fourth and final one in our series on Jacob and his journey, is filled with questions for heaven that are extremely important. So as I welcome you to worship today, let's set about seeking together God's answers to life's questions. That's great. Well, our morning psalm is based on Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. God's compassion is given to all the creation, and God's compassion is over all that God has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give all creatures their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in every way and kind in all that is done. The Lord is near to all who call, to all who call upon God in truth. God fulfills the desire of all who respect the Lord. God also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love God. Let us speak praises before the Lord. Let us bless God's holy name forever and ever. Please join me for morning invocation. God of time, sometimes our search for you takes us across the span of years. To follow you are more than a word. You become personal and real to us. God of love, sometimes our lives in your service take many twists and turns before you truly come into focus. And sometimes, like our spiritual ancestor Jacob, we really have to rest with ourselves before we realize you are the Lord of life and that you have a plan for our lives that is greater than our imagining. Bless us today. Dwell with us and guide us through your Holy Spirit into our best life, our life with you. This we pray in your name. Amen. Well, our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from Genesis chapter 32. I'll start reading at verse 22, and I'll be reading from the Inclusive Bible. In the course of the night, Jacob arose, took his entire caravan, and crossed the ford of the Yabbok River. After Jacob had crossed with all of his possessions, he returned to the camp. He was completely alone. And there, someone wrestled with Jacob until the first light of dawn. Seeing that Jacob could not be overpowered, the other struck Jacob at the socket of the hip, and the hip was dislocated as they wrestled. Then Jacob's contender said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. Jacob answered, I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? the other asked. Jacob, he answered. The other said, Your name will no longer be called Jacob, or heel grabber, but Israel, overcomer of God. Because you have wrestled with both God and mortals, and you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, Now tell me your name, I beg you. The other said, Why do you ask me my name? And bless Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, face of God, 
because I have seen God face to face, yet my life was spared. At sunrise, Jacob left Peniel, limping along from the injured hip. Well, Charles Wesley wrote over 6,000 hymns over the course of his ministry. Uh, you might even have heard of some of them, like uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, Jesus Lover of My Soul, and songs like that. And then there's, oh, let's see, what's it called? Come, O Thou Traveler Unknown, sometimes called Wrestling Jacob. It's based on today's scripture, and there are 17 stanzas. And it's not a fast, bouncy hymn. It's very slow, sonorous, and mysterious. You know, come, O thou traveler unknown, whom still I hold but cannot see. My company before is gone, and I am left alone with thee. With thee all night I mean to stay and wrestle till the break of day. Uh, I've preached over 2,000 sermons in my 41-year uh, ministry, I figured. Uh, few were great. A lot were pretty good. And every now and then, there were absolute failures. I love the story of Jacob wrestling with the mysterious figure. And this hymn, which is in our Brethren hymnal, uh, feels like it takes all night to sing it because it's <laughs> slow. It asks all these questions, and you grapple with the hymn. There are questions. Who are you? What's happening? Uh, you know, as Jacob begins to get an idea that this might be his Redeemer. So one time, as I was getting ready to preach on this scripture, maybe uh, 25 years ago, I thought, instead of preaching, I will play this hymn on the organ, and we'll all sing it together, and it will take as long as a sermon, and everybody will experience the ups and downs of the struggle. It'll be a deeply moving experience as the story comes alive in song. Well... If I had any questions about that hymn, they were answered. Never play that hymn again. <laughs> the congregation was very clear on that. Well, and if Jacob had any questions about life, the universe, and everything, they were answered after decades of struggle. There was no more hiding, no more avoiding, just lost years, lost lives, lost love, and questions for heaven. You know, there's just occasions when you can't get around God. Uh, you may not recognize it's God standing in your way, but you'll find out. In Numbers, Balaam is frustrated when a talking donkey won't move forward until he realizes that an angel with a swift, sharp sword, which only the donkey can see, is standing between him and his goal of cursing Israel. Paul is on fire with religious fanaticism until he's thrown off his horse, blinded by the light. And Jacob, Jacob is tired and worn and ready to go home, even though it may be the death of him at the hands of his brother Esau. What really stands between him and the end of his road is a mysterious stranger who's planned a wrestling match at the corner of my way or God's way. Who will win? Now, just this past week, the Chinese have sent an orbiter, lander, and rover to Mars. It's called Tianwen. Tianwen is the name of uh, a, a book of poetry by the uh, Chinese poet Ku Yuan, who lived in the 4th century B.C. And Tianwen means questions for heaven. It's really a striking book. I was looking at it, you know, just asking questions about why is the universe the way it is? You know, what's the meaning of having clouds? You know, why do the rivers run in this direction? Uh, questions for heaven uh, evidently is an appropriate thing to be about because that's what Jacob is going to have too. Now, the last few weeks as we've reflected on Jacob's journey, we know that he has fled his twin brother's wrath. Uh, and having cheated him of his inheritance, but of course Jacob's not going to get the inheritance. He's now running for his life. He comes to his uncle Laban's house where he hopes he's found a home, but instead of being welcomed into the family, he's treated like a hired hand. Uh, 
Not only that, the cheater is cheated. As he deceived his father by impersonating his brother, so Jacob was deceived by his uncle when his fiancée's sister stood in for the woman he intended to marry. Well, two decades later, Jacob's had enough. He has resolved to sneak out during the night with his wives and concubines and his many children because Laban attempted once more to cheat him of his fair share of the flocks, leading him to engage in some questionable genetic engineering, but it's in the book. He manages to come out on top. Uh, but there's a tense confrontation when the uncle tracks him down, makes accusations, but Jacob feels that he is faultless, and now there's nothing between him as he moves on except his brother's wrath. As he prepares to meet the brother who wants to kill him, he has much to reflect on. His mother is dead. His father is an old man, and he has no place to go back to anyway. All that he's got ahead of him is home and perhaps death. So Jacob places the pieces on the board. You know, one part of the family here, one part of the family here, one over here trying to cut his losses, um, and he crosses back over the Yabok River. Uh, and uh, as it says, and I love, I love the way the Hebrew works here. Let me get into this book. You always open it the other way from what looks like the back. But I like the fact that Jacob, Jacob, crosses the Yabak, which is the Yabak River, because he's going to uh, Yabak, he's going to wrestle hmm. somebody. All those words sound almost mm -hmm. exactly alike. Hebrew is based on three consonant roots, and so you just add a little bit of vowels and consonants. So, so there he is, and, and the text says, Jacob wrestled with an ish, a man, until dawn. How does that happen? It's dark. Jacob doesn't know what lies ahead. Out of the darkness comes a figure. Who is he? What does he want? There's no greeting. There's no warning. Suddenly, it's game on. Uh, wrestling has got to be one of the most exhausting sports. There's no place to hide. You know, in high school, what do they wrestle? Uh, a minute, minute uh, periods, two or three of them usually. They're exhausted. You can just see uh, that, that uh, there's no place. It's just two people grappling with all their strength. And this goes on all night until, as it says, the, the gray red light before dawn appears on the horizon. And then this man evidently had power all along. He dislocates Jacob's hip. Incredible agony. But Jacob doesn't let go. You know, typically the way a wrestling match ended in the Greek Olympics is somebody slapped the earth. They'd had enough. They couldn't take it. That, that was the important thing. And, and Jacob is going to hold on in his horrible pain. The game is not over. Now, the ancient Greeks, like us, celebrated famous athletes who didn't surrender. Uh, Arikiana Philigia won the Pancraton, which is basically a no-holds-barred version of wrestling, at two straight Olympics in 572 and 568 BC. Four years later, in 564, he was once again in the finals. His windpipe was smashed. He could no longer breathe. He was dying, and yet he broke the toe of his opponent who slapped the ground in agony. And the Greeks awarded the, the, the garland to the corpse and celebrated him, and, it's, and his statue still stands there uh, you know, because they admired people that didn't surrender. Jacob is defeated. He can't win but he won't let go. I don't know how he does it in the face of tremendous pain. But not only that, he's still trash talking. He's still making demands as if he won. For this man, whoever he is, wants to be gone before dawn. Now, the prophet Hosea, recognizing that Jacob had cheated his brother, talks about this. He says, from the womb, Jacob tried to supplant his brother, and he vigorously strove with God. He struggled with an angel, and with strength, despite the fact he was injured, with strength, he begged a favor. 
in art, Jacob is depicted as wrestling with an angel. And, but Hosea tells us both. He wrestles with an angel. He strove with God. In the Old Testament, an angel may be an expression of God, but it is God who is present. And Jacob knows this because he's going to call this place Peniel, face, Penny, L, God, the face of God. And, uh, you know, first he says, he demands, he asks for a blessing. That's the first question. Give me a blessing. And he gets a blessing, which is a name change. You know, sometimes we need a name change. Sometimes, maybe not literally, but we need to think of ourselves in a different light. Uh, the being tells him he will no longer be called Jacob, the one who grabs by the heel, as the translation put it, uh, but Israel, because you have struggled, which is Israel, or the Israel, you have struggled with God, there's the L at the end of Israel, okay. Israel, you have struggled with God, and with people you have prevailed. We may not prevail against God, but, but Jacob is prevailing. He's prevailing at the cost of a hip, leaving him with a limp that will last to the end of his days, but a lot of times we are molded by the pain that we have endured. I believe we are being molded by this pandemic, just as each one of us has been molded by our individual struggles, by our failures, as well as the, you know, the times we have endured and prevailed. Uh, in each case, we are a different person, and we've learned that we can endure, that we're not going to like it, but we're going to get through this. Uh, so that's the other question that Jacob asks. Who are you? What is your name? Because you've given me a name. And the being says, why do you ask my name? He doesn't have to ask the name now. He knows. You know, injury provides perspective, and that's because when we wrestle with God, we're really wrestling with ourselves. Sometimes we really have to get to the heart and soul of who we are and recognize there are things that are worthwhile about us. There are things that need change. But in the end, run what, as much as you want. You can't hide. You can't hide, but you can be saved if you're willing to wrestle with God, wrestling with yourself, and be open to the change that we all need so that our hearts are open, our compassion is strengthened, and we become God's presence or somebody else who needs to wrestle with themselves as well. Good for you, Jacob. You did what a lot of us are, are afraid to do. Mm. The story ends with a reconciliation with the brother, two grown men weeping on each other's shoulders as only men our age who go to movies can do when we uh, really get touched to the heart. Uh, but his life has changed. Mm -hmm. He has a brother again. He has a family again. And most of all, his identity has been changed by his encounter with God. And I hope, I hope all of us have our hearts open to be changed by our encounter with God as well. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
or offering statement this morning. In this pandemic, some things have become hard to find and therefore more valuable. Tomato sauce, toilet paper, aluminum cans, change, oatmeal. Oddly enough, however, some of us are spending less on essentials like gas because we're driving less. Some people are spending less on clothes because they're working from home and don't need to dress for work. It really varies from person to person. Everyone's circumstances are different. For some people, money is pretty tight. For others, there may be a little more than usual. Let's remember what the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Everyone should give whatever they have decided in their heart. They shouldn't give with hesitation or because of pressure. God loves a cheerful giver. Our prayer this morning. There are so many hardships we share, God of all, and yet many of us experience unique trials. For those of us who have more, challenge us to do more for the work of your kingdom. For those of us who find we have less, bless us and inspire us through your Holy Spirit to find different ways to give to the work of your kingdom. In all things, draw us closer together as your witnessing and worshiping people. This we pray in your mighty name. Amen. Very good. Well, at this point, uh, we want to thank everybody for their joys, their concerns, their announcements. Uh, uh, we, many of those will be written down at Camp Mac this morning and mm -hmm. will appear in the Green Connection. Um, and uh, many more of you are sharing those by calling the church office and letting us know what's happening. Uh, we now pray for blessings for our congregation. <sighs> Dear God of glory, we give you thanks and praise for your presence among us uh, in different venues, in different places. Uh, we're thankful for those who have made a decision not to come back yet to worship, uh, considering their own individual health and uh, their own concerns. We're thankful for their continued support and for, the, for them looking in upon our YouTube worship and just sharing the good news with others. We thank you for those who uh, feel comfortable in worshiping in each other's presence, wearing masks, keeping distance, and yet taking time to greet and to share, to laugh, and to demonstrate how much we love each other. Bless us all near and far hear our concerns, celebrate with us with our joys, and we thank you for those activities which are now taking place. We pray for continued blessings as we pray with the words which your Son and our Savior taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. For our benediction, may God bless you and keep you. May God show you favor and be gracious to you. May God show you kindness and grant you peace. Amen. Thank you.